Morsels. William Vaughan recently released version 3 of his Mop Booleans Toolkit. The toolkit is designed to accelerate your workflow when building objects using Boolean mesh operations. I took it out for a drive and I like it. But what are Boolean operations exactly? Well-defined solids, that is those that have no holes or overlaps, will have a notion of inside and outside. Two such solids can be combined with operations such as union, intersection and subtraction. Union creates a new volume that is solid where either of the inputs is solid. This is like a Boolean OR or a set theory union operation. Intersection creates a new volume that is solid only where both of its inputs are solid. This is like a Boolean AND or set theory intersection. Subtraction creates a new volume where the first input is solid except where the second input is solid. This is equivalent to a Boolean AND with the negation of the second input. Subtraction is probably going to be your go-to operation since it corresponds naturally to machining or carving. Modo is bristling with Booleans. A recent addition is the ability to do Booleans using curves. Mesh Fusion provides Boolean operations with the advantage that it automatically creates strips between the joint objects. Mesh Fusion is very powerful but there are some restrictions on the input meshes. With render booleans you can do subtractions at render time. No geometry is harmed in the making of a render boolean. This can be useful for doing cutaway views of the insides of objects. For simple builds using the mop booleans out of the box may be sufficient for your needs. But as your model ramps up in complexity, you will find yourself doing many of the same things over and over. This is where the Mop Booleans toolkit comes in. William has carefully put together a framework and set of tools to help you create Booleans with a minimum of fuss. Version 3 of the Mop Booleans kit is the most flexible version yet, and in my experience, a lot of fun to use. So, Let's cut to the chase and bring up the Mop Booleans UI with Alt-M. And next, pin it, because we're going to be using it a lot. It's worth pointing out at the outset that if you are ever unsure what a button does, the kit has excellent tooltips. Now, select your starting mesh and click the big friendly button at the top to create a Mop Boolean build. The selected mesh is copied into the build. If you really must, you can burrow inside to see it inside the mop drivers. But one of the design principles of the kit is that you should, for the most part, be able to work in the 3D view and stay away from the item list. Now that we have a mop build, we should give it a name with the handy rename button. This is going to be some sort of rocket launcher. I'll cut out a recess in the front by selecting the cutter, then the mop boolean and pressing the subtract button. Then I'll add some cylinders using union in a similar way. Select the cylinders, select the mop build and press union this time. Finally, I'll subtract some holes for the rockets. The subtraction did not work as expected because I'm trying to subtract from the union which happens after the subtraction operations. Oh dear, oh dear. No problem. The toolkit provides a solution. Right click the subtract button and select the subtract one operation. This is guaranteed to happen after all the unnumbered operations. There are four alternative slots for each operation type. It's probably unlikely that you will need that many in practice though. I'll cut some insets in the top and the bottom by selecting the cutting mesh, then something in the mop build, and again the subtract button. Let's call that done for the rough out. It's getting a bit cluttered now, 
So to get a better view of your handiwork, you can use these buttons to control the visibility of the driver meshes. The left one controls the selected build, whereas the middle one toggles visibility for all mop builds. The right button resets everything back to normal. Another option to reduce clutter is to turn off the display of wireframes in item mode. Some people prefer to work this way all of the time. We are now ready to add some detailing. But what I would like to do is use the current model as the basis for the next step without the distraction of its construction history. One option is to freeze the build using this chili button. This will create a baked version of the model and hide the original. Which is fine if you don't want to go back and make changes, but, well, you never know. A more dynamic approach is to use merge meshes to take a live copy of the build. Select something in the build and then click the stripey M button. This selects the mop build. We can create a merged copy of this with the cog button. Hide the original and we can now add our detailing safe in the knowledge that we can always go back and change stuff as necessary. Select the merged mesh and then create a new mop build and give it a sensible name. I'll cut out some ribs from the side and a panel in the top Go crazy! Add bolt recesses, rivets, dents, greebles, noodles and nernies to your heart's content. Well, that's more or less it, but there are a few buttons that I have not talked about, so I'll mention some of them now. The rest I'll leave for you to discover for yourself, and don't forget about the tooltips. If you ever need to remove a mesh item from your build, Select it, then press the blue box with an arrow. This moves it to the top of your scene and removes it from the mop boolean. The grey box is similar, but removes just the selected geometry. Last, but far from least, is the New Mesh Item button, which creates a new mesh at the top of your scene. Use this to quickly create and name new meshes. This is also preferable when using mop booleans to just pressing N, which might create new meshes inside your mop build. Finally, finally, you may have noticed the mop tube section at the bottom of the form. This is a self-contained subkit for quick and easy creation of, well, you guessed it, tubes. <laughs> Morsels.